Welcome back to the channel. Did you know that a hopping 99% of you watching right now are not subscribed to our channel? Please hit that subscribe button. Nigel Farage just ripped into Keir Starmer in a way that has left people talking. His frustration with Starmer's handling, or lack of handling, of immigration is boiling over. Farage isn't holding back, claiming that Starmer's silence on the issue speaks volumes, especially at a time when Britain is grappling with what many see as an immigration crisis. Farage is painting a bleak picture of small towns buckling under the strain, all while Starmer seems to be looking the other way. With Farage accusing Labour of empty promises and inaction, it begs the question, is Britain in need of stronger leadership, or is Farage's assessment spot on? Farage goes further, bringing up the fact that many of the migrants coming in are young men, some from war-torn regions or places overrun by gang violence. He is incensed that Starmer has done so little to address what he calls a national emergency. The numbers are staggering minus 128,000 people have arrived, and 90% of them are young men. Farage insists that Labour is ignoring these realities, not out of oversight, but because they're afraid to tackle immigration head-on. He points to the 25 Labour MPs and independents who have demanded that Labour acknowledge a link between immigration policies and racism showing how fractured the party is on this issue. Starman and Labour have rolled out a series of border security pledges, but Farage isn't buying any of it. He calls these promises nothing more than a political stunt, designed to pacify a public that's growing increasingly frustrated. Farage sees through the headlines and press releases. He claims Labour's pledges are all talk with no substance behind them. And the people living in small towns like Clacton, they're the ones feeling the brunt of Labour's inaction. Farage paints a vivid picture of how mass migration is reshaping Britain in real time, and not for the better. Schools are overcrowded, hospitals are at capacity, and roads are choked with traffic. All the while more houses are being built, but nothing is being done to address the infrastructure gaps that come with this rapid expansion. He doesn't stop there. Farage believes this unchecked migration is a ticking time bomb for Britain. He argues that Labour is ignoring the stress these policies are placing on local communities. People are watching as their small towns transform overnight, with new housing developments springing up but no new doctors, no additional GP surgeries, and not a single new road to help ease congestion. It's a recipe for disaster, Farage warns, and Labour seems content to ignore it. Farage also claims that Labour's reluctance to call the situation an invasion reflects their fear of backlash. He mocks the idea that these migrants are desperate, as media outlets like the BBC would have the public believe. Farage says he's seen it firsthand. These are not destitute individuals. They are coming in waves, overwhelming small towns like Clacton and pushing the local infrastructure to its breaking point. What really grates on Farage is that people voted for Brexit and then for Boris Johnson, hoping that it would bring some control over Britain's borders. Yet here we are with immigration numbers still climbing and a government that seems paralysed to do anything about it. Farage has always been a champion of British sovereignty, and he's furious that the promises made to control immigration after Brexit have fallen flat. His frustration is aimed squarely at Labour now, but he doesn't spare the Tories either, accusing them of failing to deliver on their own promises. Farage's criticism extends to Labour's dependence on foreign workers, especially in critical sectors like healthcare. He's not against skilled migration per se, but he believes Britain should be prioritising its own citizens, training them to fill essential jobs instead of looking abroad. According to Farage, this over-reliance on foreign talent has created a long-term problem, undermining sectors that should be brimming with British-trained professionals. He particularly takes issue with how Labour has transformed nursing into a posh profession, making it inaccessible to many Brits who would otherwise enter the field. And then there's the European Court of Human Rights, ECHR, which Farage views as a major roadblock to effective immigration control. He argues that as long as the ECHR has a say in British affairs, the country will never be able to properly manage its borders. Farage highlights the halted Rwanda deportation flight as a prime example of how foreign courts are undermining Britain's sovereignty. He is unequivocal in his belief that Britain needs to break free from these external influences if it's ever going to get a grip on illegal immigration. Farage's frustration with the status quo isn't just about numbers. 
It's about what he sees as a fundamental betrayal of the British people. We've seen an uprising brewing within the Labour Party, with senior figures dropping out left, right and centre. Today's video takes a closer look at a Labour MP who didn't hold back, publicly criticising Keir Starmer and his party's handling of matters during their first 100 days in office. It's refreshing to witness MPs not just resigning but openly speaking their minds. In this video, we'll dive into what was said and explore the latest developments sweeping across the country. But before we go any further, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our rapidly expanding community. Recently, Labour MP Graham Stringer took aim at the government's winter fuel payment policy and their poor communication strategies during a national news appearance. The Manchester Blackley MP slammed the disconnect between policymaking and its communication to the public saying, there doesn't seem to be any coordination at the heart of government when it comes to this. They roll out a policy but seem clueless about how to explain it. Citing the winter fuel payment as a prime example of bad policy, poorly explained, and mocked the government's justification as utter rubbish. He added, ministers were sent out claiming market collapse if we didn't act. It's all nonsense. He then pointed out that the winter fuel payment is less than 0.2% of public expenditure. Pensioners most certainly would. According to Stringer, stronger leadership is essential, urging that only the Prime Minister can fix this. It's not bound to some office or bureaucrat. It needs to come from the top. This criticism comes as the government faces mounting backlash over changes to the winter fuel payment, leaving about 11 million pensioners in the cold, quite literally has new rules now restrict eligibility to those on certain means-tested benefits. One Scottish couple, Peter and Florence Fanning, has even launched a legal challenge against the UK Work and Pension Secretary, accusing the government of failing to properly assess the equality impact of these changes. Their case, supported by the Government Law Centre, could delay the policy's rollout, and money-saving expert Martin Lewis suggests this might buy pensioners another year of receiving the £200 to £300 payout in 2024. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the headlines, a deported Albanian migrant has successfully lodged a claim with the European Court of Human Rights to stay in the UK after marrying and having a child. Ardian Binage, who originally snuck into the UK in 2014 and was jailed for burglary, managed to return illegally after being deported in 2016. Now, citing his right to family life under Article 8 of the ECHR, he has been granted permission to stay despite working illegally in the UK. Former Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick has since blasted the ruling, calling it a textbook case of the ECHR enabling criminals to escape justice, and argued that the convention has been stretched beyond all recognition to become a criminal's charter. Back in domestic affairs, Labour's Rachel Reeves is feeling the pressure to reverse the Conservatives' highly controversial alcohol duty hike. A survey of pub landlords has revealed that one in five pubs believes they won't make it through the next year if the tax hike remains in place. Introduced in 2023, the 10.1% duty increase on spirits has been widely condemned, with distillers struggling to stay afloat and some even shutting down. These are testing times for Starmer and his Labour government and their decisions, be it on pensioner support or the booze tax, are leaving many wondering if stronger leadership and better communication will come soon enough. 